Good morning and welcome to our virtual Palm Sunday service here at Unity on the River. I am so glad you're taking this time to join us. Let us begin with a centering prayer. So if you're comfortable, I invite you to just gently close the eyes, take a deep breath, connect with the heart space. And remember that in the midst of these turbulent and unprecedented times, at a time where what we have been used to is currently no more, is paused. That today is Palm Sunday, a day where we traditionally observe, celebrate, in the scriptures, Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Let us remember that as we choose always to live from that divine Christ center that we are, we see that in our life, there is much to be grateful for. There are so many ways we are still blessed. And as a result, there is much to celebrate as well. So let today be a day of celebration, a day where we, where we say Hosanna, a day where we remember the joy, the joy that is ever present in the divinity that we are. I give thanks for you, your presence, and your continuing to be the light in the world. And so it is, and so let it be. Amen and amen. So yes, it is our Palm Sunday service. No palms to wave, but hey, if you got palms where you are, you got any kind of tree, branch, whatever it is, you can celebrate, you can wave it. And I'm thrilled today because not only are we joined again with Meg, by Meg Rain and Lynn Taylor, Brian Dozer is also here, and with Brian is his daughter Hannah, and I'm going to turn it over to them now as they sing for us, Prepare Ye the Way of the Lord. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. One more from 
from the top. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it Yay. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Great job. Thank you, Hannah. Good to see you. <laughs> awesome. 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 Ah, so uh, we're going to switch the energy a little bit and get ready to be centered for some meditation time. Going to invite Lynn and Meg to start to take us in with God is all there is. Yes, thank you. Indeed, there is always simply divine presence. It is what lies under us, under all things. It is that which connects us all, embraces us all. It is that in which we move and live and have our being. So let us take that into a time of meditation now. So if you are comfortable, I invite you to take a deep breath. Gently close the eyes and wherever you are sitting or even lying down right now, simply allow the body to relax. Allow yourself to become fully present in this now moment by simply allowing your attention to follow the breath. Allow the breath which flows in and out to be that which pulls you into the stillness of this now moment.
Allow the breath to, should you become distracted, what brings you back to this now moment? Distractions as we meditate are normal. So let's not judge ourselves for them or wish it didn't happen. Simply return to the breath. Perhaps sink even deeper to feel the beat of the heart, the pulse through our veins. Let us become still in this now moment. And in this stillness, let us remember the deep truth of who we are. Let us remember what we are indeed capable of. The ability to see through the lens of divine consciousness. When we see through the lens of divine consciousness, all we see is God. All we see is the opportunity to experience oneness. The opportunity to experience love. The opportunity to experience abundance. The opportunity to experience wholeness. And we experience these by becoming these, by being these, by doing these. When we love, we experience love. When we give and share, we experience abundance. When we surrender to knowing that all that is happening now is exactly as the way it should be. We experience the wholeness of life. So let us settle in to surrendering to that truth. Only through the lens of our divine consciousness can we see the perfection that there is in this world. Can we see the perfection that we are, that we can give to the world? Surrender to the truth of your divine consciousness. Surrender to seeing divinity everywhere. Surrender into the stillness. Into the stillness.
through the lens of my divine consciousness. I embrace and see others in their wholeness and the fullness of the divinity that we they are. So for all those that you may hold a concern or a care or a worry, I invite you to bring them to mind now and hold for them also the intention that they see themselves and their situations through the lens of the divine wholeness that they are. When we see them through that lens of divine consciousness, we no longer see problems to fix. We simply see opportunities for wholeness to embrace. Because we know, we know that even in the midst of their circumstances, our circumstances, whatever, the presence of God moves in through and as us, in through and as them, in through and as it all. So let us come out of this time of stillness and meditation, affirming that as we sing, surely the presence. presence of God is here and it's because it's with each and every one of us and love is guiding us through all of this. Um, I want to say I'm so grateful to have Lynn Taylor here with with me singing that we can have this time and do harmonies and play and absolutely yeah so and and really remembering that love is guiding us this sweet song by Sally Rogers we uh, thought would be a really wonderful expression today. Love will guide us and join us in the PowerPoint, I think, is going up, possibly. <laughs>
Thank you guys that was that was beautiful beautiful thank you so much ah uh, so here we are we find ourselves on palm sunday and you know i gotta tell you guys it was it was challenging to write a talk this week um and you know some weeks it just flows out of me some weeks um not so much and this week was a little for me, and I know for some other folks, a, a, a little weirder than the last two weeks, if you can imagine that. Um, but, you know, as I talked to some of my other minister colleagues and some other folks, I think I was able to realize that this past week for a lot of us was perhaps the first week that, that the shock of our new way of being or new way of life or transitioning or trying to create new routines and new ways of being the shock of it sort of worn off a little bit and now we've kind of a little bit surrendered or beginning to accept that this is how things are and now in a sense the 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 enormity of where we are and and what lies before us is really beginning to sink in like 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 for the first time we are we, we things of things of uh, i guess calm down settle just a little bit enough that we're for the first time taking a step back and going wow where, like where are we you know what's 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 happening you know the last couple of weeks was like we got to do this we got to do this how do we figure this out what do we do you know and and now we've kind of beginning to hit a little groove into that newness and we can almost take a breath for the first time and 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 begin to, to to accept like this is wow what's happening so it's a new level of realization um for us a new level of acceptance um because the initial shock of it has worn off and 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 as i was thinking about that i i realized you know this this might have been what jesus felt maybe either right before or right after that 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 entry into Jerusalem that, that we honor today um, as Palm Sunday. 
Um, and I'll get to that in a second, but, but the other piece that, that I wanted to share also, which was a nice Holy Week tie-in, was that many folks that have been speaking to during the week, you know, uh, been speaking to some of you one-on-one, -on -one, um, took time to tell me how great it's been reading that Finding Yourself in Transition book that I shared in my talks the last four Sundays. And I realized that Holy Week was probably this big transition time for Jesus as well. You know, remember we talked about endings, the void, the new beginnings. Um, I think that as Jesus, you know, stood uh, on the hill overlooking Jerusalem, as, as he was maybe waiting for the disciples to go in and, and, and get the donkey and, and set things up, that he was realizing that his ministry, his whole way of life was, was, was ending. He, he, he knew what was, was coming up before him. And it wasn't that because, you know, as, as, as many traditional um, Christian uh, teachings will tell us that because he was the quote unquote only son of God, so he, he knew everything and what was going to happen. I, he knew what was going to happen because he he was an intelligent man who knew that he had upset the establishment, both the the Roman establishment and both the uh, religious authorities of the time. And he knew that walking into Jerusalem, especially setting up the entry that he was setting up, was was going to was going to put him in the spotlight, was going, to, was going to threaten his way of being. You know, we read the scriptures and think that this entry into Jerusalem was a, a spontaneous sort of gathering. No, this was, this was meticulously planned ahead of time. Um, and, and that day in Palm Sunday was not the only triumphant, so to speak, entrance into Jerusalem. It wasn't the only parade. It wasn't the only ac acknowledgement because... Every, every time uh, that, that, that they were there for Passover, and that's why they were there, by the way, uh, they were in Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. And uh, Passover, we, we sort of touched a little bit also in the Finding Yourself in Transition book. The, uh, the Passover is honoring when the uh, children of Israel were fleeing Egypt. And, and before Pharaoh could let them go. He was stubbornly holding on. And there were these plagues that, that came over Egypt. And the final plague was the death of all the firstborn children. In order to prevent um, that plague, the angel of death from hitting their homes, the Israelites were asked to, to paint lamb's blood over their house poles. And the angel passed over their house. Uh, so hence the term Passover. Uh, um, um, and uh, it's something that's observed by um, folks in the Jewish tradition to this day. So um, they were there to celebrate Passover. In case we've forgotten, spoiler alert, Jesus was not a Christian. He was a Jew. He was a good Jewish boy. So he celebrated all the Jewish holidays. And he went to temple. And, uh, and, and the, the quote-unquote last supper that you know, Christianity co-opted later to make it into communion was was a, cell, a Passover meal. It was a Seder that him as disciples were observing. So they were there for to celebrate Passover, and at that time it was usually a time where where the uh, the Israelites who were under Roman oppression tended to get restless. Why? Because thousands and thousands of people would descend upon Jerusalem, and sure they'd be celebrating the Passover, but they would also be griping about. Roman oppression. And, and it was usually a time historically where, you know, skirmishes and rebellions would start. So in order to, to prevent that from happening, Pontius Pilate, the, 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 the regional uh, governor, would march into town also in his own parade. And his, his parade wasn't a bunch of, you know, civilians waving branches and throwing coats down. No, his parade was the might of the Roman army horses and infantry and and drums and 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 horns and it was it was it was designed to intimidate the people in Jerusalem to not start trouble during this passover time sure you could come celebrate and honor your religion but don't start political trouble 
So Pontius Pilate was there and he would come through the main gate of Jerusalem with all the fanfare and military might. And on that day, Jesus and his disciples and those who were following him and honoring him, they set up their own entry at the back gate. It was much smaller, but it was just as poignant. So can you imagine that there were two of these parades happening at the same time. And as we read in the scriptures, the, the, the folks were throwing their coats down uh, as, as, a, as a way of honoring Jesus riding in, in, in the most humble fashion on a donkey. And they were shouting Hosanna and, and rejoice and, you know, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And, and we, 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 we've got these two opposing sort of things going on. So what does that mean for us today? What does that mean for us as we take a a, a metaphysical view of the scriptures? Again, you know, should you be new to unity? uh, When we read the Bible, we interpret it metaphysically that, 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 that everything that happens is a representation of our own inner spiritual journey. So we got, we got Pilate on one end and we got, we got Jesus on the other. Pilate represents the, 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 the human sensory consciousness experience. It represents our, 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 our egos, needs, and fears. It represents our, our effort to, to try to control and exert our will over things. And, and Jesus, on the other hand, when we read about Jesus in the scripture, it represents the divine nature that we are, our spiritual consciousness. So here we have these two almost opposing ideas happening. And I don't know about you, but that's my daily experience. (laughs) You know, I know the truth, the divine spiritual truth of who I am. And then something like the coronavirus outbreak happens. And and, and the, the human piece of me wants to go into fear. The human piece of me wants to control what's going on. It wants to say, this is nuts. This is crazy. What did we do wrong? Who can we blame? How can we fix this? And we become afraid. We become afraid of becoming sick. We become afraid for our loved ones getting sick. We, we all sorts of stuff gets, but then we got to remember the other parade, the other side of this story, the divine of who we are also exists. In every moment, folks, we have a choice. We have a choice between, between uh, violent nature thoughts or peaceful thoughts. We have a choice between trying to exert our will to control or just being willing to surrender. We have a choice to, to, to just follow the status quo or we have a choice to transform. We have a choice to, to live from a consciousness of separation, seeing others as they, or from that consciousness of oneness, seeing everyone as we. Every moment is a choice that we have. Every moment we are are in in, in Jerusalem, which metaphysically represents a a place of peace that can be uh, disrupted is a, uh, let me rephrase that, it's a place a peace that comes through living from our spiritual consciousness. That's what Jerusalem is. And we have a choice to let that be disrupted by the, by the pilot of us, by the Pontius pilot, the, the human sensory consciousness that is freaking out. Or we have a choice to join Jesus's parade, be centered in our divine consciousness. See, as I said in my meditation, the world through that lens of spiritual consciousness in the parade people were shouting hosanna and metaphysically that simply means save us save us that's what it translates to save us what is going to be our salvation our salvation is when we choose to live from our spiritual consciousness just as the folks were in jesus's parade realizing for them He and what he stood for was their salvation for us right now. Continuing to live in, from, and as the divinity that we are is our salvation. And let's be clear, folks, that's going to take a lot from us. It will require us to dig deep 
to a place of strength that comes not from our willpower or from our experience. It's a place of strength that comes from the endless resource that is God within. And in fact, that's what, that's what the palms represent metaphysically. Both palms and the color green represent strength. It represents that realization that all that we need to do to not simply survive, but to thrive and transform during these times, we already have it within us. It's no wonder later in the week, Jesus found himself in his uh, probably greatest moment of despair in the Garden of Gethsemane. This was where he was able to transform into that surrendered place. He would say, if this your will, Father, take this from me, as in like, you know, can I get a pass? Is this optional? Like, you know, do I have to do this? Was what he was going into with. But then it transformed into not my will, but yours. In other words, surrender. In that place was where he found his strength. In that place within us, that place of divine truth, that is where we find our strength. We can do all things through the nature of the Christ that dwells within us, that will give us strength. So my invitation to you this week, and the week after that, and the weeks after that, is to remember and to notice that you have a choice in which parade you join. Are you going to join Pilate's parade? Are you going to join the, 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 the parade that says we've got to try to control and exert will and, 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 and it's either us or them and, and, and uh, attitudes of lack and hoarding? Or, or will you join the Jesus parade? Will you join and embrace life from a consciousness of there's only one of us, which is all of us? There's more than enough to go around that we give and share. And when we give and share, we realize the abundance and the blessings. And every day, regardless of what it seems is happening outside or in the news, every day is a cause for celebration. A cause to say Hosanna, to realize that our salvation is living in, through, and from the divinity that we are. This is what Palm Sunday is about. A reminder, a reminder that we have it in us already. And that from living from this place, we indeed transform ourselves and transform the world. So I invite you to take a deep breath, gently close the eyes, and affirm, I am the strength that I need as I live my divinity. I am the strength that I need as I live my divinity. Divine strength is one of our 12 powers. It is an endless resource. And I surrender to letting it fuel me. I am the strength that I need as I live my divinity. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen and amen. Before I turn it back over to Brian to share some more music with us, just a few announcements for you. If we were, if we were in our sanctuary, I'd be reminding you that we have prayer chaplains who uh, could sit and pray with you and hold the truth for you. And I just want to let you know, uh, we still have our prayer line that you can always call in. You can always call Silent Unity 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and our prayer chaplains are also extending the invitation. If you want to receive a call from them, you can do so as well. So uh, the days are all blurring together, so I don't remember if I sent it out in the email or not, but if I haven't, uh, we will be sending them out to you, um, and it's a form that you can fill out and share things like your, if you want to have a call in the first place, 
uh, your information, what day of the week, how often you want to receive a call. So be on the lookout for that form coming to an inbox near you very soon. Also, uh, just a reminder that if you always want to continue the deep learning, um, Tom Paolini, our licensed Unity teacher, will be starting his metaphysics class in a couple weeks. Visit unityontheriver.org slash classes to sign up for that. Also, uh, Tom is leading um, a virtual men's group. So if you know um, there's a man in your life or you're a man watching and you want to have a deeper spiritual connection with other men, um, he's doing that. Email him for the link directly, tompaolini at gmail.com. And uh, part of why I'm asking to email him is because of the next announcement, which is uh, for many of us, we use Zoom for our meetings and we usually just post a link. And um, you may have seen or may not have seen, uh, Zoom has been going through some security upgrades. Um, there's such a thing called Zoom bombing now where just random people are showing up in your Zoom platforms. So they're going to switch it where um, needing a password is going to be the default set in. Um, and um, if you are joining us for host or virtual hospitality, if I understand it correctly, if you click on the link on our webpage, you should be able to get in easily. Um, if you're going to type in the, uh, what do you call it, the median ID, you may require a password. Um, I don't think one set yet. So if you have trouble logging in, from doing a meet and ID, just go to the webpage, unityontheriver.org, and you should be able to click the link and get in. So yes, join us for virtual hospitality um, at 11 a.m. right after this service. Also, please remember to continue sharing of your abundance um, by giving so that we can continue to provide services like these and classes like the ones we do during the week, and so that we can come back together and have a place to come back together uh, when this all subsides. Head over to unityontheriver.org slash donate, or there's a text to give, and I meant to have the phone number with me and I forgot it, but it's up there too. Um, or good old fashioned postal service, stick that check in the mail and mail it to us, 58 Macy Street. All the ways that you can give are in our newsletter and on our website. I think that's it for announcements right now. So I'm going to turn it over to Brian Dozer and he's going to share some more with us. Go Brian. Hmm. Yes, don't forget to keep giving. We need to keep the lights on back at the church. So it's there when we get back. Uh, we've sung this one a few times. It's by the birds. So join in please. Take the solo, but no one's here to take it. Want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit, one and all. 
want to thank the God in me and as me as I lay my burden Thank you, Brian. So yes, indeed, let us lay our burdens down, all the worries, all the concerns, all the fears about this time, and let's just surrender. Surrender, be in the flow, know that this is, again, something that showed up in our life that presents an opportunity for us to show up as the divine. So let us affirm that there is peace on earth, there's love, there's wholeness, everything that we desire. Let there be peace on earth. Peace to everybody. Stay safe. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth a peace that was meant to be with God as creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let us affirm. And before we do the prayer for protection, uh, Meg and I will be doing a Good Friday service. With Lynn. And Meg, Lynn, and I will be doing a Good Friday service. Are you getting in on this too, Brian? Or no, it's just, it's just the two of them? You need me. Anything. Ah. We there always you need you. So there will be a Good Friday service, and it will be posted Friday uh, evening, I believe at 7. Um, we'll be posting more details about that as well. So let us end today by affirming together, the light of God surrounds us. We are the light we of God. We are the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. We, we are, are the, the love, love of God. God. The power of God protects us. We, we are, are the, the power, power of God. God. The presence of God watches over us. We are, we the, are presence the presence of God. Of God. Wherever, Wherever we are, God, God is. is and, and all, all is well, well. And, and we are richly, richly blessed. blessed. Yay! Happy Palm Sunday to you all. Thank God you for bless. joining us. Namaste. Bless, bless.